All right, welcome back to the Admiral's Cup, the AOE 2, and we've got Sal's Vinchester here in the Purple Trunks Byzantines. He's up against the Viper today, playing for Gamers Legion, I believe. And he's in the yellow on Hindustanis, so Byzantines, great trash war sieve and good defensive sieve because of their extra health on buildings. So extra strong building walls, and castles, town centers, all the rest of it. Well, the Viper, I think it's Hindustan, he's a much newer civilization to the game. Cheaper villages, so his early game economy will be really nice and affordable. Stronger camel riders and gunpowder units. It's really nice, flexible anti cavalry and anti structure sieve, really. Sorry, take that back. Gunpowder, not. That's not cannon units, is it? Like uh, bombard cannons? So it's more armor rather than, you know, anti-structure prowess, it's just more defensive stats for late game gunpowder units. We've got a number of relics here actually, so there's four up on this top side, and four over on this side. Actually no, one, two, three, five, six, seven if you count all these ones over behind. The Viper, so he's really lucky with that spawn, actually. Uh, over behind Vinchester, sorry. So he's really lucky with that spawn. That's an amazing amount of gold, whereas the Viper... Sort of really only got the one super safe relic. Vinchester's really got three, and then this one's still really quite close. So... The Viper's a little bit screwed by the seed, as such. I mean, if he was more over here, it'd be a lot easier to control these rocks. I suppose it actually isn't too bad to control this one. It's sort of central between the pair of them, these two down the bottom. And, you know, when you're playing on maps with only sort of three to five relics in one versus one, it's not uncommon to see players completely fucking ignore them. But, I suppose in a map like this, it's only quite small, particularly Vinchester, if you have the opportunity to sit on a lot of relic gold. But bearing in mind, it's not quite the 100 gold a minute that it is in AoE 4. It's actually somewhere around 30 gold a minute, so gold every two seconds. It's not quite as good, but bearing in mind gold is a lot more limited in the ultra late game. Although on a map like this, there is a bit more in the way of extra gold. So we're here on graveyards. So we got quite a number of patches of gold and even stone out in the map. So our players Probably be playing quite aggressively. In fact, the Viper is going to open with Militia here. Well, Vinchester getting his barracks now as well. Why is it saying? Oh, the replay systems playing up. So you can ignore the rest of that. Some of the game I previously casted in uh, 4v4. It's annoying because it's going to bug out on the statistics table. So yeah, those were the, the end stats of players in a game of Nations Cup that I'd casted. So check that out. But, but now you've only got to pay attention to these two. So, the Viper. What are you on, man at arms? Finchester. You're looking to try and evacuate these villages. Or well, take a really nice surround fight against man at arms, because you can't afford to have a low health village get caught in the middle and just get picked down.
couple of low health villagers in the midst of that. One of them actually falling there, so the Viper getting a little bit of value out of this already. Not going to commit to any more man at arms though, he's just going to stick with these and start getting some archers. Or Vinchester. How to defend with spearmen because he can obviously use them to much greater effect than against cavalry. And if he just goes with militia, he doesn't want to go on man at arms upgrade himself. Man at arms all being picked off there, but not before they get one of the scout cavalry of Vinchester's. Oh. His spear's taken a little bit of damage. Vinchester just walling himself and keeping himself secure, forcing that scout to have to slow down a little bit too. Back at home, the Viper. Base is a little exposed, but I mean, he's really only got to wall these passages later on. He's oh, now started to get his archer production oh. and some of his own spearmen. Just knowing that uh, Vinchester's got cavalry and spears and not worrying about archers for now. So he's going to start archer production oh, soon. He's best off having a couple of these spears out to defend. Up one archer. Pretty safe, a bit of a bait even. Doesn't end up taking any damage, but the next one that trains does cop it a little bit. He's might be trying to quick wall his opponent in here, catch these light cav. So a couple of those will actually fall. The Viper going back to farming. Same time, Viper losing a uh, spearman there to start his. So uh, Vinchester started skirmish production to try and counter those archers. Obviously, much better suited against infantry and just against general targets, while they lack against range compared to the skirmishers. That lone skirmisher can't engage units uh, while they're standing immediately on top of him, unlike an archer. Though against spears, it's not too bad of a fight. Bit of a back and forth there. With oh. one of those spearmen falling. But one of those skirmishers getting a little bit lower. So, the Viper pushing out again with some archers. Bringing your spearmen across just to help keep them safe as well. Now the Viper's starting to really warm himself in on that front side, getting his blacksmith upgrades as well. While Vinchester just house walling to protect himself. Doesn't seem to have a stable I mean a blacksmith yet because he's committed to the archery range and gone for a bunch of skirmishes instead. Military sizes. Eco sizes is very similar here for our players. Though the Viper getting that one villager kill early, which is always just a nice little benefit. Gather just that little bit more quickly. A lot of archers are going to be able to pin down the spearmen very easily. All the skirmishers, it's tough for them to actually engage, so they want to really get on that back line, but at the same time, they can't afford to have things just attacking them. Straight on, so the Viper forcing a big villager pool to get this guard tower up and to keep a lot of the other villagers safe. The tower finishes, so the Viper's archers are gonna have to try and micro the hell out of here. Get a villager or two. So he will be able to do so. And Vinchester's actually down by six villagers at the moment, so the Viper really starting to put his opponent on the back foot getting towers, losing villages, and Vinchester hasn't actually finished his blacksmith off for some reason. Too busy 
busy microing over here to worry about the uh, blacksmith completion there, or he's trying to save to actually get a wall finished up. I don't know why he doesn't just finish the blacksmith. One archer. Just outside of range of the town center, so they're working away at the house. The Winchester is going to finish off the blacksmith. I don't know why he actually stopped her. Because surely he would have been messed off just finishing it, regardless of whether or not he could afford to finish this. Just bring her back and have her gather something, even if it's distance gathering on the tree. Any amount of gathering is better than nothing, and... I mean, I'm certain he's a good enough player to know that. But... The Viper is pushed, has been... Pretty much held off now, but his castle age is just about finished while Winchester is still stuck in the feudal age at the moment. So he's halfway to castle. But we'll kick in a little bit later. That means the Viper will be able to have a couple of early knights on the field before his opponent and start really pressuring with those, or camels, which he's going for. So he can counter any knights that. Uh, Vinchester goes for. And the scout cavalry. You have to be very careful. One of them going down. They're only 10 health off the camel rider. And Vinchester, his own, attempted a run by. Not really working out. Two camels. So you're trying to cut through the palisade, but it's being repaired. It'll be a while before that goes down. So Vinchester's is going to have time to commit to a second stables. Start getting some techs and more cavalry out. So he's going to go husbandry, get that uh, extra movement speed on his cavalry. Be able to take more favourable engagements. And the viper. I'm going to come through Vinchester's wall here. Just going to put another piece of palisade up. Probably needs to start repairing that other piece or placing another palisade on top of it. I'm going to try and attack the other side of Vinchester's base here. As he defends the first angle of attack there, while well, this next one is just going to have some houses placed up behind the wall. The Viper, it's been nice map control for him, he can start snatching up some relics. While well, Vinchester, no doubt looking to just take all three of these relics that he's got, so it's quite favourable map spawn to be in a defensive spot on, because he's going to still get three relics basically for free. Once he manages to convert a couple of camels here. So he's also got light cavalry. He's still got access to knights, I'm pretty sure, as Byzantines. He's just not able to get the final upgrades on them. But he's just opting to go light cav. Cheaper option. And against economy, it's still pretty much as deadly. It's just that they don't fight all that well into uh, camels. Knights sort of do, but especially the longer the game goes on, the more upgrades both units have got, the more it starts to become uh, camel favoured. So, a couple of monks being sniped here. Good pickups there for Vinchester, slowing down that uh, gold acquisition because now the Viper's actually got to outlay the gold to replace those monks and spend the extra time without having uh, some more relics. So just a little bit more of a gold cost. Players need to snatch up some relics. Vinchester on the one. And the Viper on the two at the moment. Okay, Winchester going for camels of his own here. Viper 
but just keeping tabs on these outermost relics at the moment. Keeping an eye on where Vinchester's potentially looking to raid him, so if he just, miss or just misses this run by. Vinchester, there is still openings into part of the Viper's base here. And that monk is going to be just out of line of sight of these two like Cav, but they're going to be able to keep tabs on the back of his base. Now the Viper finding his pair of light cavalry, and he's going to be able to clean them up with his camels, but he's going to run into Vinchester's camels as well. Got a light cavalry. Heading into the base, they've managed to snake one of the villagers, but they both will fall. Ein, ein. And Vinchester. They pick up a relic. A bit more map control. He's attempting to grab another one here. Both players, both up to three relics now. They're both holding a fourth. And fifth. Winchester trying to attack the Viper in the meantime. Oh, holding those two relics. Conversion attempt successful, but it's only on a spearman and it will cost the life of the monk anyway. Winchester up to four relics now, and a fifth about to be Garrison, the Viper. Garrison is fifth, fourth and fifth as well. There is still one last relic left in the back there for Vinchester, so he'll be up by one relic in the long run here. But the Viper is <coughs> actually in a better spot economically here. As he's got a 25 vil lead at the moment. Vinchester was slightly more military though, so not all hope is lost yet. And again, he's still the ability to get one more relic over his opponent, but that would also require uh, making another monastery at this point, because he's got five relics in the first monastery. So I wonder if we'll bother going for that a little bit later on, as he gets a bit of extra wood. House right next to the gold mine, just keeping track of it. This monk getting picked off by the Viper, Winchester. I think they've actually checked for a relic that's not actually there, so the Viper's actually going to try and pinch the relic over in the far corner or be able to convert a couple of units here. So trying to hit Vinchester from the other side, who's now got a hole in his base. Let's chop through here. So a lot of these villages are under pressure because he's trying to go for this uh, forward castle, take Imperial, so he can start um, getting kills with the trebuchets. The monks wool looing. Yeah, but steal a couple of villages, which is always nice better than being able to steal your opponents straight off them is being able to steal their eco units straight off them. Winchester. I'm going to try and wall up on this side. Get some houses and keep applying pressure with the trebuchets because you can try and take out houses or the monastery or the mill, maybe even the town centre. Ghoulam's being thrown into the mix here. Very fast infantry unit. And the monk might be able to get the conversion here. Or he does. Ghoulam's with 
the Viper and Imperial Age, so he's going to be able to get the Elite upgrade on them. He's sending them all over Vinchester's economy at the moment. He's even managed to find a way in the top of the base, so he's going to be able to get another villager or two out of that. And Vinchester now trailing by a lot in terms of eco pop and a little bit in terms of military pop. He's going to get another trebuchet over here. The Viper. Got a couple of forward um, castles. I believe he's going to get another one here. So he's just castle crept all along the bottom of the map. And Vinchester just runs out of steam there.